Blessings everyone, this is Chris Kendall from TheRawAdvantage.com, registered holistic nutritionist, raw food lifestyle coach, and raw chef. Today I have a special Christmas gift for you, raw vegan sushi, the best ever. Let's get into it. Baby, I like it raw, raw advantage likes it raw, ooh baby, I like it raw, yeah baby, I like it raw. Alright guys, so I'm really excited to share this recipe. I bought a whole bunch of this certified organic raw vegan nori from rawnori.com. I'm not an affiliate or anything like that, I just really enjoy it and I've had a hard time over the years getting good quality vegan, certified vegan nori. A lot of the standard stuff out there is kind of questionable. There can be little teeny bits of uh, crustaceans and other animals in there. I did a whole post about this in the past, plus made my own raw vegan nori recipe called Better Than Nori. It's all from land plants instead of aquatic plants, so it's a little easier to do. So that's going to be down below if you want to make your own nori. Otherwise, this stuff's pretty damn good, rawnori.com. So I've been really impressed and making a lot of different sushis. And I wanted to bring to you guys a special trick. You know, in the past, making sushi, making raw sushi, you know, use cauliflower rice, but it usually falls apart. And I figured out a nice little trick to make it stick together and taste a heck of a lot more authentic and just be way more fun so when you're cutting it, it doesn't just fall apart and blah, 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 right? So you guys wanna get into the recipe, you know? And I, you know, I'm gonna let you know something else really fun too. This is gonna be recipe number one of two for Christmas for you. So this is gonna be the first one. It's the regular sushi rolls with the seaweed on the outside. And the second one will be next week with the inside out rolls with the rice on the outside. And I have a couple tricks for that one to make the rice stick and stay so it looks perfect and again, doesn't fall apart in your hands. So let's jump right into the recipe. So what you're gonna need is 460 grams or one pound of cauliflower, 100 grams of ginger peeled. You can use the back of a spoon an eighth a cup of chia seeds, I prefer white, one half of a lemon or about four teaspoons of lemon juice, 150 grams of cucumber, I prefer these little guys, 75 grams of red pepper, one avocado, which is about 180 grams, and 25 grams of green onion. And for equipment, you're gonna need a knife and a cutting board, a sushi rolling mat, a food processor or the Vitamix blender. And if you're using a food processor, then also the Vitamix blender or a seed grinder or a coffee grinder. This is just a magic bullet that has a seed grinding attachment. So let's start off with the rice. So we're gonna start with this cauliflower. Now this is one small cauliflower or about two thirds of a medium cauliflower. It's one pound with all the leaves and everything off it. I'm a little bit exact in this recipe because it can be a little bit finicky and if you're gonna make a whole bunch more rolls then you wanna have your ratios right. So we're making four rolls which is a a pretty decent meal for me actually. Four rolls with the one avocado, especially if I'm having a fruit starter. It may be two portions for some people and some people might wanna make a little bit more, but we're starting with this one pound or 460 grams of cauliflower and I'm gonna rinse it off. This is actually an important step. You just wanna lightly rinse it off, clean it, make sure that it's uh, got no dirt or anything on it. It's not organic, it's good to wash it anyway. Washing it. Get all the excess water off of it. I'm not gonna dry it completely. Just getting it pretty darn dry. So we have our cauliflower nice and washed. And while it's sitting there, I'm gonna take the ginger. You wanna start with the ginger first. And again, this is 100 grams already pre-peeled. So you just use the back of a spoon or a knife. I'm gonna chop this up just into little medallions. I like a lot of ginger. If you don't like ginger so much, you can omit the ginger or cut it in half. But even though this looks like a huge amount, it's actually not a ton in the recipe. It doesn't overpower it. So we're gonna put that into the food processor, put the lid on, and pulse this up until it's a nice pilled rice texture. There we go. It's useful to have a spatula on hand, which I usually don't like to do, but is useful in this circumstance. Another pulse. There we go. And now, once we've got that started, we can start putting some of this cauliflower in there. 
I like to start off by putting about one half of the cauliflower with the pulsed ginger in there, and then we'll finish the rest of the cauliflower in a second batch. Now we put that ginger in there first because we want it as fine as we can get it, but the cauliflower you actually don't want quite as fine as you can get it. You still want some of that texture and consistency that's a little bigger, kind of like rice. So we got a little bit more than half in there and we're gonna pulse this right up. Basically you just pulse it until you don't see any big chunks going around and if one will go away and it's getting small, then you just open it up and take those big chunks out for the next batch. I'm gonna take this square Pyrex dish. You don't have to have one of these, but you'll see why it's useful in a minute. And pour the cauliflower rice right in there, taking out any big chunks if any are in there still. Might need to get that trusty spatula. There we go. Smells amazing. And we'll get the rest of the cauliflower in there. If you don't like cauliflower or you just want to try something different, you can also use jicama. It works very well. You just want to chop it into medium bite-sized pieces before throwing it into the food processor to get kind of an even chop. I've even done it with like carrots and other fun stuff like that, but cauliflower, I'd say it's probably the best personally. Pulse this up. Let's pour this right in that Pyrex dish. All right, so now we have all this beautiful rice. And this is how I used to do my sushi, just like this. But I figured out a few tricks. First, we're gonna take those four teaspoons of lemon juice and just pour it on top of the rice. This gives it a little bit more of an authentic kind of sushi rice flavor, because they usually use rice wine vinegar. If you're not opposed to it, you could use apple cider vinegar, but I find that this lemon works Perfectly. So we just want to give that a little bit of a stir around. Try and make sure that that just lightly coats the rice so it's all just a teeny bit wet. And it is just a teeny bit wet from washing it earlier. And then I'm going to take the white chia seeds and put them into the seed grinder. Now, you want to get whole seeds rather than already ground because when they're already ground, then there's much more chance that the fats are going to oxidize and go rancid. and. So you want to keep your seeds and nuts good quality raw in a cold place, fridge or freezer to last the longest, only take them out when you need them and fresh grind if you're using it. So this has a little grinder blade and put that on top and pulse it in here. Again, otherwise you can use a coffee grinder or the Vitamix. There we go. We just want it nice and ground up into a chia flour. Look at that, can you see that? Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. So we're just gonna pour this over top of the rice, nice and evenly. One eighth a cup actually stretches out to a lot, and we're gonna stir it up. You wanna make sure that you mix it up really well so that the chia powder really kinda of goes around to every single little nook and cranny, mixed together with the beautiful cauliflower rice lemon juice, and ginger. It's really aromatic, looks great, and this is the secret to get the rice to stick together. So once we've got that decently stirred up, what we're gonna do is take a little uh, pie crust thing or your hands and just press it down into the pan so everything kind of sticks together a little bit. Try and make it fairly evenly. This is why I did use this square little dish you can use just a regular bowl, it all works really well. I'm just gonna squish that down so you can see it's nice and tight in there. And then take a knife and cut into four sections, even sections. And then you know exactly how much rice goes into each sushi roll. Now we'll just set that aside so it can chill for a little bit. We're gonna to wanna to get the rest of the ingredients all ready and chopped up so that we can make the sushi a heck of a lot easier. So what we're gonna do is take the two baby cucumbers. Of course, again, you can use regular cucumbers. I like to chop off the ends, so I'm just gonna place them together, chop off those little ends. That can be a little snack. There we go. Mm. And then we're just gonna cut them into quarters by cutting them lengthwise one way spinning it and cutting it lengthwise the other. So so then you have these four perfect sticks. I'm gonna set these up here. And 
and that's right. If you did that right, those two mini cucumbers end up being eight cucumber sticks, which means two per roll, right? Oh, you got a kitty. She wants to go outside, but it's really cold. So here we have the 75 grams of red pepper. This is actually just the side, one half of a red pepper. So it's kind of two sides because they're kind of like usually shaped like fours, right? So I like them to be perfect flat like this. So it might end up being that you need about 120 or 30 grams of red pepper and chop off the top and the bottom to get this perfect 75 grams like this. And this is super simple. All we're gonna do is chop it in half and then chop those in half and then chop each of those so that each sushi roll gets four of these little guys. So there we have all the red pepper sticks. These two green onions, what I'm gonna do is chop off just a little bit of the bottom white, and I'll save that for a sauce perhaps. And we have these two sticks. I'm just gonna cut them in half lengthwise. And then each sushi roll it's one half and the avocado will slice last by cutting in half and then each quarter cutting into three slices. All right, so we got everything ready. We got the rice, the cucumbers, the red peppers, the avocado, the green onions, and the nori. What are we missing? A little bowl of water just to seal the sushi. So we're gonna start by taking one of the nori sheets and we'll put it shiny side down on the sushi mat take the rice and we'll take one quarter of it and just scoop it on just on the bottom third. There we go. And now the secret here is we want to press the rice down. We're going to leave about an inch at the top and about a half an inch at the very bottom of the sushi mat. If you want, you can use a little pie scoop to flatten it out and you can even put it to the edge of the sushi mat and squish right up to there. So it gets a nice flat edge. Once you've got it spread out perfectly, you're gonna take your avocado. So take three slices of avocado and put that along the bottom. Usually I like to do a big slice, the smallest one, the other way, and then the second biggest one. Take a green onion, put it right across. Take two cucumbers, put them right across. They might be a little bit long and if you need to, Bite a little chunk off of it. Four red peppers. Go right in the middle. And then what we're gonna do is carefully line it up on the rolling mat so that it's right at the bottom. Take a dab of water with your fingertips. Spread it across the top. We'll pinch this and grab the topping so they don't move over and bring it all the way to the other side. You want to squish it down, not as hard as you can, but pretty firmly. Roll this back a little bit and then continue rolling until it's nice and sealed. Squish it good and you have one perfect sushi roll. I call these sushi snakes and sometimes I'm lazy and I just eat them like this, like snakes. It is nice and fancy to cut them to make it more traditional. So what we're going to do is cut them right after rolling them. I've tried waiting and it works way better if you cut them right after rolling them. So I'm just going around the outside and pushing a little bit of the rice that started to come out back in there so it's nice and solid. You'll notice that there isn't rice dumping all over the place. That's one of the benefits of that chia so it nice and sticks. I'm going to take a sharp, sharp knife. Now, I'm using a serrated knife because I don't have any super Japanese ninja knives that are so sharp that they work well. If you have a really sharp one, that works. Otherwise, a sharp serrated knife. We're going to go right in the middle and cut it in half carefully with a nice sawing motion, regardless if you have serrated or not. Then you can place them beside each other. Cut them both in half. and in half again. Careful not to chop your fingers off. And cut the last two. There we 
you go. That's what we like to see. Place them on a nice plate, and then we'll continue and roll all the rest of the sushi. Let's continue rolling. A little tip, it can be a little bit easier if you wet your knife or just clean it off between each sushi roll. Well, there you have it, a raw vegan sushi feast fit for a king or queen. Seriously, ridiculously delicious, but to try it, right? So I like them plain like this. Let's go for it. <laughs> Seriously, one of my favorite raw vegan dinners. A nice thing to switch up from my curries and all the other recipes. You can check out my raw some recipe playlist, over 100 free recipes my Raw Advantage app, over 100 recipes in there, and all my other fancy books and trinkets. All the links are below, but uh, these are honestly perfect and delicious as is, but you can use any of your favorite dips or dressings. I got over 21 in my Naturally Rawsome Dressings book, and also Naturally Rawsome Sauces teaches you how to make your own sauces, dips, and dressings, so you become a bona fide raw vegan sauce master. Because we don't know, it's all about the sauce, and little teaser i'm gonna have a lot more sushi and sushi sauces and stuff upcoming in the future but uh as i mentioned next week will be the inside out rolls and i hope you absolutely enjoy these hit like and hit that bell so you get notified first when the new videos pop up and you know just give a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like it i really do hope you like it though as always wishing you much peace love and seasonal fruit the best raw vegan sushi Go ahead, give it a try, the rice sticks. Ooh, don't forget to check out my raw recipes playlist in the top left, the video just for you in the top right, subscribe for more videos in the bottom right, and get your three free ebooks in the bottom left. Grab your free raw recipe app, available on iPhone and Android with over 100 free raw recipes, common fruit and vegetable calorie breakdown, frickin' raw some food combining chart, shopping cart function, and so much more.